the blood. Well, we're live now. Amen. We're trying to see what song we're going to sing. How's everybody doing? It's all good. Y'all come on in and share this. Line up. I'm going to share it to my um, my other page. Oh, we got an amazing guest coming on. So make sure you share, share, share. Uh, you know, we are gonna, we're continuing to expose... Um, the J. M. and my cult and uh, David E. Taylor, okay? And so I want you to share this. I'm trying to find it on my page so I can share it to my other page. And um, there we go. So I think I got it shared on my other page. So please share, 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 share. Um, I'm going to uh, give a rebuttal of a of a. Uh, uh, something that he put on his page yesterday, and we're going to talk about that before I invite my guest. You, I talked to my guest uh, at 6 o'clock Central, and the stuff that he shared with me, if I had known that before I connected with this ministry, listen, my hair's coming down, ministry, trust me, you would never see me connected with this person. If had I had the information, see, and that's why we're doing this. If you have, information is, is everything, information. And so that's why I, I'm so compelled to give you this information because if I had I had this information, I would have been so far from David E. Taylor and the JMMI movement. No one shared the information that I'm going to share with you tonight. And our guest is going to be on here in about 10 minutes. Uh, our guest is going to share uh, to this afternoon. I was just like, my jaw was just like, I couldn't believe the stuff I was hearing over the phone. And uh, so it's going to be very informative. I'm not a woman scorn. I got to say this again because I'm getting some inboxes. You're, no, I'm not a woman scorn. This is a, it's just so much bigger than this. Someone asked me, "Have you forgiven him?" Listen, he didn't ask me to forgive him. Of course, I've forgiven him because I can, I, I'm going on. I'm way past what happened to me. So we're sounding the alarm. Uh, there are mothers. There are there are ex-wives. That he ex-husbands. That they abs he's absolutely destroyed their marriage. You know. Uh, he destroyed their marriages. I cannot believe the marriages, the husbands that inbox me, the wives that inbox me, that the, that he literally destroyed their marriage. And so um, this is the year of restoration, I believe. I believe that this is the year that his kingdom is going to come down. David E. Taylor's kingdom is coming down. And I want my cousin uh, Amanda to come sit by me. We're going, we're going to, we're going to talk about. Uh, something that he put on his page, and we're gonna. I want you to sit real close to me so you see in the ca in the camera. <coughs> and I want she's gonna read this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna <coughs> interrupt her, and we're going to. Uh, I'm just, I just want her to read this. Okay, speak loud. Okay. Watch out for the spirit of sedition. Okay, wait now. What does sedition mean? Listen, this is David Taylor. But here's what the definition of sedition means. Hang on, we're going to get the definition of sedition. What does sedition mean? It's a noun. Conduct or speech inciting people to rebel against the authority of a state or monarch. Okay, let's continue on. This infiltrate person from your inner circle who is lusting after power, fame, anointing. Stop. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I was there at JMI with him, I said, listen, this is how brainwashed I was. I don't, I don't need to travel and sing anymore. I just, I've done that for 28 years. I just want to be here. I want to lift your arms up. I want to be, I want to be uh, the woman that you want me to be. It's not about me anymore. I want to help you. I, did you ever see him promote me on his page? Did you ever see my, Vicky's going to do this? He never promoted me. I never pushed myself. Now, I need to stop right here and, 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 and finish this. At his crusade in August. He promoted I was going to be, you know, the guest singer. Well, I sang like the first two nights. I never sang anymore. Well, I did mention to him, I said, you know, you had, I scheduled, you scheduled me to do this concert in this particular afternoon, and it just never did happen. And I had people coming from all over the world, the United States, and, you know, you're going to do this concert this afternoon on this particular day. And he just said, well, it just didn't work out. And I said, you can't do that because you, you can't, you know, then I, I had a little red flag then, mm -hmm. you know, okay, so... Right. So you, you're advertising me that I'm going to sing. You get all these people here, and then you don't have me sing. If anybody that knows me, when I go to churches, if they say, Vicki, just do one song, or you know what, we're floating in a different right direction, you don't have to sing. I'm not one that's wanting to jump on that platform and be seen. That's not my heart. Right. So he's wrong there. But he's probably talking about that time when I said, listen, you've advertised to do a concert, and 
I'm not doing it. Yeah, people are expecting that. <clears throat> Again, who is lusting after power, fame, anointing, and Talk notoriety. They think that they are better than the leader or that their giftings are superior. Oh, oh Jesus. They That's get right. offended when not consistently given the platform and will go behind the leader's back and have secret meetings with sympathizers. Stop. I never, when I was, when I was under his power, I never went behind his back and talked to anybody. Because if you do it, if you do that, if I would have done that, I'd have been out a long time ago. So you don't do that. And those of you that are in it or you've just come out, you don't go around talking or you're done. So that's a lie. Go ahead. With an intent to destabilize the leadership and cause division and strife. They're influential. And okay, so he's been doing this to women for over 15 years. We're going to hear more about this tonight when our guest comes on. Influential. He's never messed with somebody that has the platform that I have. See, he right. underestimated my platform. Right, that's Because right. he told me when, I, when all this was going to happen, he said, you don't want to do that. You don't, you don't want to get out there and tell people your business. Listen, I don't care. I'm the sacrificial, whatever you want to talk, call me. I don't care, my dignity, whatever. The reason why I came out, and did my video was because I want to set some women free. Yes, yes. Do you think I wanted to get on Facebook Live and tell the world that I slept with that? Mm. Really? Really? No. Oh but I knew that it would set women free, and that's, that's why right. I did it. Okay, that's go ahead. Right. I, got caught, I got caught up now. I finished the last. Because of their proximity to the leader, they're usually seen as believable. They know how to work the crowds to their hey, stop. advantage. Isn't this something? All this stuff he's trying to say about me, it's him? It's him. Mm -hmm. it's work him. The, why, why would I work the crowd? I'm a worshiper. I want to lead people in the presence of God. Right. It's amazing the things that he said. And he's always done that. When he tells, I've never seen so many people in a movement so depressed and always say, oh, I'm, I'm full of pride. Because he drills them. Everybody's prideful because that's what My he struggles God. with. Yes. You know, he's, everybody's lying, but he's a liar. That's so right, right here he's right. saying, what was that last thing he said? He said he said that they know how to work the crowds know to their advantage. Know how to work the crowds to their advantage? That's the pot calling the kettle black. Yeah, it is. No <laughs> pun intended. No pun intended. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> the anointing that they leave with, with generally dries up after a time because it's disconnected from the source. Okay, David E. Taylor, if you're watching right now, if you think you had anything to do with my anointing, no. you are dead wrong. That's right. I've been I've been I've been anointed. God anointed me from the day I was born. When Amen. my when I was in my mother's womb, let me yes. tell you something. Called he me. knew I there was a destiny and I came forth. You have nothing to do with my anointing. You have nothing to do with the touch of God on my That's life. Right. And I am disconnected from you. Yes, I was with that ministry for 16 months, but I am no longer connected. I am not, the anointing is stronger on me than ever before Hallelujah. because I have disconnected. When That's I right. was with you, when I would sing, I would feel a choking in my throat. When oh my I, I'm telling you, it, it, I, I even talked to some of my friends about it. But now I'm so free. It is. It, you have nothing to do with my anointing. In fact, my anointing is stronger than ever before. So that that bunch of hawk, read that and line he, again. And he is not your source. God. He said source. disconnected from the source. Like he's you, your source. He's not your source. You are not my source. Mm -hmm. God is my source. I was anointed. You know, I wrote a song when I was 16. Right. Mm -hmm. Anoint me, Lord, today as I go along my way. Yeah. Let my life simply the go. Let the a glow, let the oil around me flow. Anoint me, Lord, I pray, amen. And let me, I'm going to sing that in just a moment. Oh, but let me just yeah. tell you right now, let me tell you right now, why I, ever since this happened, God began to deal with me. He says, Vicki, what has happened is you didn't know about the corruption in this ministry, or this cult. You didn't know that they were copying and pasting uh, uh, a pro false prophecies. Right. Vicki, you, you were in there innocently. You did not know that, that they were scamming women and that he was sleeping with all his spiritual oh, okay. daughters, allegedly. You did not know none of this. And you were in there and you were innocent and you were giving me praise and you were giving me glory. And honor. He said, Vicki, but you had to go through this. Mm. Yeah. You had to go through this yeah. so this man could be exposed. He's been exposed before, but it just, just for a few weeks and died down. We ain't going nowhere. No. I'm going to tell you right now, you have nothing to do with the anointing on my life. No. Disconnected from that, I won't have the anointing from a liar, from a blasphemer, from, from a, an egomaniac, from a, a, a whoremonger. Yeah. You're all those. You're all mm -hmm. those. So uh, I wanted her to, say, to, to talk about that just for a moment because I wanted you to, to, to the, the mindset of this dude. I mean, it's like, he's a clown. I mean, it's just like, really? 
Really? And we know he that has an you can. You he can has, hear a, he the has something, but it's, it's a devil. It's yeah. a devil's. Uh, and in just a moment, we're going to have uh, our guests come on here and we're going to go further with that. But I just wanted to share that because I read that today and I was like, wow, really? Really? And I was able to reach out to one of his, hot, his top donors today. They didn't respond back to me, but they haven't blocked me. They haven't blocked me. And I'm just believing by one. We call it, we're saying one by one. Mm -hmm. One by one. If I'm on here two years from now, and wow, a thousand has left it. We still got about another two or three hundred. Listen, I'm not going nowhere. We're going to shut this thing down because amen. everything that's not of Jesus will come down. Amen, 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 amen. amen. So I'm going to sing. Our, our guest is going to come on in about five minutes. I'm going to sing a song. I wrote this song. When I was 16 years old, let me tell you something. I was traveling for, wow, 27 years before I even come across this man. He has nothing to do with the anointing on my life. I thank God that God preserved me and God got me out of that mess. I just thank you, Lord, right now. I just thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you never left me, that you understood my assignment, oh God. Here I am again, Lord. great so I can see that you guys are on there. Uh, how's everybody doing tonight? I hope you guys are great. God is doing some awesome, 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 awesome things. Did you comment? I don't know. Do you see a lot of comments? I don't see any comments, so I don't know what's wrong with my, my phone. Oh, awesome. That's okay. As long as she, if she's seeing the comment. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, I'm not going to worry about the comments then. So I'm not going to block anybody, so I'm, I'm, I got my block. You, you got your block already? Okay. Okay, so the only thing about it, the problem is I got to make sure I see um, uh, yeah. uh, my guest. So my guest is going to come on. Can you please, um, hmm, I'm just trying to think how I can add him. Wow, good stuff. Yeah, but I'm not seeing any of them. That's a problem. Yeah. No, 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 it has nothing to do with that. 
Okay. Okay, so my guest needs to come on here. I'm trying to find him now. I don't see him yet. Hang on a second. Okay, hang on one second. We're gonna our guest is come on. You guys don't go anywhere. You're gonna be blown away. I talked to him today, and absolutely, absolutely amazing. Um, yes, but I don't see the comments yet. So I'm waiting for him to to come on. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amen. Okay, I just don't, I'm not getting the comments. So I'm just making it mad. Let's see. I'm going to see if I can get, uh, hang on, y'all. Right, left. He's here. Okay. So, Marlon, if you could log off and log back on, then I'll add you because I can't. It's not letting me see the comments. So, okay, can you tap him? like to join can you like could you see it can you say tap his name mm -hmm. and have him join can you do that okay. bring the phone over here hang on y'all we'll get him on here let's see hmm. no okay uh marlon can you log back off and then log back on and then i will uh see you come on and we'll get you on okay marlon oh, Reed. yes yeah but he yeah, we, I'm trying not to, yeah. So, yeah, Marlon Reed's going to come on in just a moment, but I just, I know, I can't, I, I see him, but I, I'm not seeing the comments, so I need you to log off and come right back on, okay? Make sure y'all's volumes are down in here. Hang on, I'm looking for Marlon. Turn that volume down over here. Hang on, y'all. Y'all don't want to miss Marlon. Okay, Marlon, can you go log off and come right back on? Listen, those of you that are just joining, we're going to be doing this every night, 7 o'clock. We're exposing David E. Taylor and the JMMI um, cult. We got mothers. We got... Uh, Courtney, don't call me on that line, okay? Call me on the other line, the 225 number, okay? Um, I'll call him. I'll call him. Okay, we're going to call him. We're just going to call him. Hello. Okay, yes. I'm, you just, I guess you're going to have to turn your volume down in there. Turn your volume off on your computer because I'm going to have to, I don't know. I wasn't able to add you. I turned it off. I've been trying to get on the comments. Yeah, well, I can, my problem is normally I can hit your comments and you come on. But you're live. Everybody hears you. Uh, we got over 300 people listening. And so um, I, I want you just to uh, introduce yourself and how you know uh, a David Taylor. We do not call him Apostle. Uh, we call him David E. Taylor. And I want you to just kind of share your how you know him. and Because um, you, you talked to me today and you absolutely blew my mind. And so we're just so happy to have you on here. Okay. Um, my name is Marlon Reed. I'm a pastor here in, uh, in Detroit. I pastor a church called The River in Livonia, Michigan. Uh, we've been pastoring here for about 12 years, going on 12 years this April, and I've been in full-time traveling ministry for over 27 years, and pretty much been born and raised in my church in Pentecostal charismatic sections uh, all of my life. Can you hear me? Am I coming through? Yep, yep. Okay. Um, well, I met David Taylor. I used to, one, at one time, I moved to Memphis, Tennessee, and I was living there working in a church called Abundant Grace Fellowship. Um, and in my tenure there, I had a friend of mine. She was a, a minister at a church named Paula Ratchford. She lives here, incidentally, in Michigan, mm -hmm. pastors a church in Dearborn. But back then, we met for the first time, and we connected. She introduced me to David Taylor. He was a young evangelist. At that time, he was living, uh, he was going to Bishop Patterson's church, mm -hmm. G.E. Patterson, Church of God in Christ. And uh, he was holding little small meetings in a hotel, and he was, you know, she introduced me. He walked up to me after service because... He saw me praying for the sick, and he and I were the same age. He said, "Hey, I, I noticed you pray for the sick, and you, you know, I see how God uses you. It's kind of similar to the way when I pray for people, and I'm not, you know, I'm not seeing anybody my age, you know, our, our age doing them." I said, "Well, you know, I've been in the ministry. I, we, I, we started exchanging and talking, and so that's how we connected was because of the supernatural, because of praying for the sick and deliverance and that sort of stuff. And we talked and chit chat. I always thought he was a little strange. He was always bent on a lot of. He was always talking about a lot of visitations and." And I, I just listened to him, you know. But I was glad to have a fellowship. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, he moved to St. Louis. He wasn't married back then. Now, we 
talking about 1996, 95, 96, something like that. He moved to St. Louis, and I didn't hear from him for like several months. And he suddenly called me out of the blue, and he talked to me, he told me he got married, and he started having to do meetings there in St. Louis, and he was telling me all these things. Now, you know, you don't usually doubt people when you don't know or have a reason to doubt them when they tell you things. And he was just telling me these extraordinary things. I'd be sitting there saying, wow, God's doing that. Well, that's amazing. Well, needless to say, we became friends over the phone. Now, I wasn't living in St. Louis. I couldn't verify anything, but I didn't have any reason to not believe you mm-hmm. telling me the truth because honestly, I didn't care one way or the other. I mean, mm-hmm. amen. Right. So when I came to St. Louis, uh, I would notice that there was, he, he invited me over to his office and he had all these women working at the office. And I said, man, you really got it going on over here. And all, all these people had came off their jobs and they were actually working for him. I said, David, how do you afford to pay these people? He really wasn't, really wasn't preaching anywhere. He only had like, small little services he was having monthly in the hotel. Uh, and so he said, oh, they've all volunteered. I said, they don't work jobs. We were there in the middle of the day. And I said, wow. He said, yeah, they, they, they're paying the price for the ministry. Most of them all have, the Lord has appeared to them, and, and they're, they're dedicated to this ministry. I'm saying, wow. You know, so I was sitting there, and I noticed that all the women, I'm sitting in a low chair in the lobby where he has me in the hallway. All these women walking past, and I noticed something very strange. Now, I'm I'm from America. We're not in Europe. Most women shave their legs in America. And all these women are walking around with hairy legs. And I'm looking at them, and it's the summertime. I'm like, wow. Women usually, you know, they're like, <laughs> women usually shave their legs, which I thought was weird. So and I just got, I didn't pay attention to I got in the car. And I, I said, David, I said, why are all the women in your church walking around with legs without shaving them? Oh, oh, fella, you, oh, man, you noticed that? I said, yeah, I noticed that. When they walk in there, why do women walk around in that? Mm-hmm. I mean, where, where are they from, France, or where are they from, Europe? <laughs> and, she, and he's sitting there, oh, no, you don't understand. He said, well, you know, I counsel the married couples in my church, and I'm very open, and I tell them all about the things that I like and the things that I like to do. And, you know, I confess to them and say there's little things I like my wife to do that are going to turn me on. I said, really? You know, I just talk openly. They're, they're like my sons and daughters. I said, okay. And when I told them I like women's legs to be hairy, I like hairy legs. And then all the other men started coming forward and admitting that they like hairy legs. And so their wives started following the same example, and, I said, so you mean to tell me they all walk around because all the men admitted they like hairy legs? Uh, he said, yeah. Now, this is a small thing. I'm, I'm telling you this because later this is going to become key. So I'm thinking, I said, David, that is the strangest, weirdest thing I've ever heard in my life. I said, but hey, again, I'm there to preach for another church, so I didn't care. It wasn't none of my business. Deep his own, man, my own business. Fast forward, David comes calling me one day. And he's on the phone. Years years later, actually, like five or six years later, he calls me on the phone. He, He's crying, he's upset, he's had a failure. Uh, he didn't want to tell me, but I, I don't have nobody to turn to. And I'm, I'm touched. I'm like, so, like, what's going on, man? I, I, I had a moral, I had a failure. I, I, I failed. I said, well, what, what do you mean you failed? With, with a woman. I said, with a woman? I said, oh, man, you're in trouble. I, I, I want help. I need help, man. Uh, things are going on. I need somebody to tell me, would, would, you, would you come? I said, would I come? I said, I, I love you. I'll come. I'll try to help you help you get on a restoration. Now, he doesn't know what restoration means. Let me tell you something. He's never been a part of any church. He's never mm-hmm. served any pastor. He don't know anything about restoration, but I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. So when I get in town, he flies me there now. I get in town, he's hiding. I had to go meet him at a hotel because he was hiding from his house. I said, David, why are you in the hotel? I, I, I couldn't go to the house because it's not safe. I'm like, why? Well, you know, the, some of the men are mad at me. And he started giving me this elaborate story. I said, okay, okay. We're going to try to help. Where's the woman you fell with? Where's your wife at? Who's talking to Tabitha? Well, he had these other pastors, uh, a guy named Paul Sherl from Maryland, and two other pastors, a woman pastor to talk to women and another male. And we were supposed to be there to try to help him, you know, recover everybody, make sure his wife is all right, help him, help the woman. Mm -hmm. But as it turns out, as we begin to talk to the people, he hadn't slept with one, it was two. I said, David, you said it was one. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, it was two. I was afraid to tell you it was two. I didn't want you to feel bad. I said, okay, as long as it's just two, it's just two. Then it was three and four. Then it was five and six. Then it was seven and eight. Then it was nine. There was a woman in this ministry that was in her almost 50, that was almost 60 years old, from a 19-year-old girl to a 60-year-old woman. I said, David, what are you doing? And he gets on the floor. I'm telling you, he flew. He wanted to leave town because he was afraid. So we flew to Rod Parsley's convention. I'm not joking. He flew me. He wanted to get out So you're saying there was nine? Now, were these people, were they part of the board or something? There was something, is that, were they connected to his church? They were just all staff members. Yeah, all staff staff members members. members in his church. (laughs) All staff members. Now, we go to, we go to, we go there, and he and I are out of town. I'm still sympathetic. And then it just gets, the numbers just keep climbing. 
And so I looked at him and I said, you're in trouble. I said, you got to sit down. I said, there ain't no restoration for you right now. I said, you need to sit down, close this church down. You need to go find a pastor and be transparent and get into be a, get accountable. And I said, and you need to sit down. I said, you need to be counseled. Your wife needs to be counseled. She's a victim. I said, David, yes. you're, a seri- you're a serial adulterer and you're destroying your family. And he got, let me tell you something. It's like he has split personalities. He mm. balled up on the bed like in an embryonic, like an embryonic, you know, fetal position. And he's sitting there like he's sad. And I said, David, you destroyed these people's lives. Here's what happened. The women started coming forward. One of the women said that David, uh, this is how it happened. There was a little young girl at the ministry. He had gotten pregnant. Now, he forced her to fly to go live in Washington to get away from it because he wanted to, you know, keep the scandal down. This girl's 19 and flies to live with a distant cousin in Washington. Now, after this happened, when her older brother found out that he had got her, that he was the one that got her pregnant, he's the one that got the baseball bat out and the car load of ministers, and they was driving around looking for David, so he was terrified. He was at, at a hotel. This is the truth. I, I, everything I'm telling you is the honest to God truth. This is, it just gets crazier. So one of the young girls, that he, another one young girl he was speaking with, started, you know, walking around the, uh, walking around the office, and here, now this is the truth, uh, just brace yourself, because this is where it's going to get really crazy. The woman noticed that she wasn't wearing any pants around the office. And she began to talk. And what are you doing wearing this around the office and apostles here? You dress like that. And so the, the little young girl kind of like, well, you know, started speaking up for herself. And they got into an argument. And it came out the young girl admitted that, well, he's mine. He's going to be with me anyway. What? He didn't know she was talking to a woman who he had been sleeping with for several years, one of his elders' wives. When she found out, that he was sleeping with this young girl, she went, and she tried to tear that room up. She went nuts. She went crazy because she thought she was the only one. And here's the thing. David had all the women in his office walking around with no panties on. They weren't wearing any undergarments, and they weren't shaving their legs because he liked hairy legs. He was into this. This is why they were, and they all thought they were the only one until they That's found out exactly. they were not the only one. And they tried to tear that church up. And I said, David, you brought me and these pastors down here to help you, and you're not being honest. David, this is Armageddon. This is no, you can't go get help for her and you if you sit down for a couple of months and get back in ministry. I said, you're unfit for ministry. Exactly. You have to sit down. He got on the floor and cried and begged. I mean, he groveled, literally like a kid. Down on the floor, oh, I'm so sorry, and I don't know what to do, and they're going to try to destroy me. I said, well, David, you're going to have to help some of these people because you've taken their money. Listen, let me, let me, let me give you the run now. David had an older man that he was taking care of. He had moved in when he first moved to St. Louis. This older man had gotten sick, got senile, and David was still collecting his checks from this man. And he was whooping this man and abusing this man. And the family was trying to find him. When David got wind that they had went to the police trying to find this old man, he went and dropped him off at the supermarket and left him there. And the, and the family found him. David began to do this. He was doing so much stuff. Here's another thing he had him doing. There were several of the women that he had them going around saying they had the cure of cancer. What, if you, what would you do if you had the cure of cancer? They would stand out in front of supermarkets. They would walk. One girl told me she walked her toenails off her feet walking around. He always wanted them all walk around with high heels and be dressed up like they were, you know, evangelists or something, like Mormons or something. He had them all dressed up. This girl to me, she said, I walked all day, every day until my toenails came off my feet. She said, what was, I said, what were you doing? She said, we would stand outside of supermarkets and tell people, what if you had the cure to cancer, but nobody, you had no way to fund it. You had no way to fund it. What would you do? And people would say, I don't know what I would do. That's why we need you. Can you spare a dollar? Can you give $10 to water? We have a cure. We just can't get it out. And people would give them, they raised over, the lady told me they raised almost $150,000 in one summer with that scam. And he was telling them, this is how they justified it. He said, well, we, we do got the cure to cancer. It's the healing power of Jesus. So we're not lying. We're just not telling them because they won't support it if they think it's healing. This same woman now, now she's on Facebook and she's a friend of mine. I won't mention her name, but I can I can tell you her name another time, but she's on Facebook. This woman was from another country. She moved here when she was 18. She came from an Eastern European country. She married a young man who was a, he inherited a trucking company from his father, a, a multi-million dollar trucking company. She had two kids. This woman was one of the women we interviewed. This is the one where it hit the fan with David. Now, this is not the other women he was sleeping with. David was having crusades. He was doing his services, and he would go up to his room, and he would sleep with these women and have their husbands waiting downstairs for them, thinking that they're taking care of him and looking after him. It was astonishing. Even STDs 
were getting spread around the women. He was giving STDs to women, and they were giving them to their husbands. And it was just, it was just, let me tell you something. The more and more I uncovered this problem, this situation, the sick, I actually felt like I needed to take a bath after listening to this stuff. It was so disgusting. This is what this woman told me. David told her, now he's out knows witchcraft involved. She told me, I said, how did you get involved in your marriage? You got two children, your husband is wealthy. David told me, he said, well, the Lord appeared to a millionaire and told him to buy me a, a white Mercedes. I said, David, really? Yeah, he, he bought me. He was up preaching one day. I told him, I said, David, you told that story. I said, what millionaire bought you a white Mercedes? Oh, Bill, uh, he bought me a white Mercedes. I said, he did. I said, wow. Now, this woman was married to Bill. And here's the thing. When Bill worked so much, he was counseling uh, this man and his wife. And he knew that this man was working so much, the wife was complaining about the husband never spending any time with him. Always gone. I mean, have no love, no love making. This guy worked almost 16 hours a day running this company. And he would come home and be tired. David knew this. Get this. She told me I began to have dreams about having sex with David. I had like a series of three to four sexual dreams with David. And I knew he was my pastor, my apostle. And I just, I wouldn't think of it. I thought it was a demon attacking me. And she said, well, my husband went on a trip out of town. David showed up at my house at 7 o'clock in the morning knocking on the door. And I knocked on the door. Apostle, what are you, oh, what are you doing here? I, I have something to talk to you about. It's very pressing. It's very important. And let me in. I can't come in. Oh, sure. He came in and he told her this sob story about how his wife wasn't having sex with him. And he was going through difficulties and struggles and battling and told her that, you know, he knew that she was to be his wife, but she married him and he married Tabitha and it was all wrong. He should have waited for her. And he's a, he thinks he's in love with her. And she, she quickly says, we, no, no, you stop talking like this. We can't do this. We can't do it. And she made him leave. He left. And she closed the door. Guess what? He came back the very next day at 7 o'clock in the morning, knocked on the door. But this time he told her, listen, I'm wrong. I was out of order. I shouldn't have came to you that way. I know that was wrong. Hey, listen, here's what. Can we just pray about it? Because I know the spirit, we got to come against this. And can we just pray? And, and then she listened to him. Yes, we need to really rebuke the spirit. So she left him in the house. And he tells him, where, where can, where can. Now, this is a woman that's not been, not been calling her with her husband for months. Okay. She's not satisfied with her husband because they haven't been even doing anything. Mm -hmm. and, she's been, and she's been having dreams about having sex with David. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get this. He goes to her. This is what she told me. She looked me right in my face and told me. He told me that we needed to pray. She said, I had an altar, a prayer room in my house. He said, let's go to your prayer room. And she said, okay. They went to the prayer room. He said, let's, he, he, he went sat down at the altar, the little altars they have in prayer rooms in people's houses, you know. She got, he said, come here and kneel down with me. She walked over and he pulled her down next to her. And when she got next to her, he put his arm around her and said, I want you. And I want you right here on the altar before God. And she looked at him and he went to come along to her and she gave in to him. Now, I know it was true. I know it happened because I confronted David to his face in his hotel room. And he got on the ground in a fetal position. I said, David, how would you sleep with the man who was funding your ministry, giving you thousands of dollars, helping you? He this literally, he got on the ground and told me, I said, you slept with someone, though? And he looked at me with a little, almost a little grin. He said, uh, he told me he went by our house. He came to see her. And he told, this is what he told me. He told me he laid in the bed with her and had sex all day. All, every day while her husband was gone. And that's how the love affair started. Now, what happened next was, is that her husband wasn't completely stupid. He just trusted David emphatically because he's the apostle giving David money. Well, what happened is David was saying that a millionaire is supposed to give me a car. And he's not, and he's not obeying God. And, and this guy sitting in church and like, well, God ain't talking to me. And he, David kept on saying it. And then finally David said, you to me, man, you're supposed to buy me that car, but you're not here. God he said, oh, no, dad. He had all these grown men calling him dad. No, dad. Now, the Lord didn't tell me to do that. He said, yes, he did. You're not listening. So David went back and forth and the guy said, this is what I'll do. He said, I'll go down and put the down payment and I'll get the Mercedes. Now, this is a hundred thousand dollar car. This is the top of the line Mercedes. I'll go put the down payment, but I'm not buying the car. And David said, okay, he accepted that. So he got the car and gave it to David. It was still in the guy's name. David then convinced this woman to pay the, the $900 car note. Now he's sleeping with her and she's paying the $900 car note and the man bought the car and he don't even know it. This man, he's dating this man's wife, having an affair with her the whole time. This is the truth. Sick. Now get this. Here's the worst part. David is on the phone with her one day and he's going off on her saying, I saw you looking at so-and-so and I saw you talking to this one and I know you're probably being cheating and he starts going she's like no no I'm not cheating on anybody I'm just with you now her husband picks up the phone in the house and he or he overhears the conversation and he goes nuts he 
he goes ballistic. He can't believe this has happened. He gets on the phone and tells David, you bring that Mercedes back to this house now. Well, I can't. I'm out of state right now. You bring it back or I'm putting out a police that you stole the car. Mm. David, has, David has somebody drive that car back to the house. He, this guy, left his wife that night, moved out, went to the office. He started, listen, he backslid started having an affair with his secretary and had a baby with his secretary. Put in divorce papers. Now this woman has been here since she's 18, married to him. She don't have no education. She had nothing, no job, a housewife. David came to her and said, I'm not gonna let nothing bad happen to you. The Lord has appeared to me and spoke to me. Don't fight him in court. Don't resist him in court. Let him have whatever he wants. Don't say nothing. And she thinking David's there for her. She goes to court. She doesn't fight for, for custody of the two boys, doesn't fight for custody for joint custody, alimony, nothing. And so therefore, they don't bring up anything about why they get divorced. The judge grants divorce. The guy gets the kid. She's broke. She has nowhere to stay. All she has is a Mercedes. My God. And she had to sell the Mercedes to the, the pastor. Paul Sherrill agreed to buy it from her because she needed money so bad. When she called David after the court case was over, his phone disconnected and he would not talk to her again, ever. He scum. He's scum. He let that woman go in there in that courtroom and not say anything because David didn't want his name brought up in court. And he coached her the whole time. And he left her with nothing. I remember I saw this woman destitute. Now she's recovered since then. She's moved on with her life. And she's even said, I'll forgive him. I just want to move on. But her marriage ended. Her family, she lost everything. You know what? He could not care less. He He had no remorse. He had no remorse. He could not care. This is just one woman. One of the women he slept with. One he ruined. He destroyed so many of these marriages with these with these people that were serving him. But here's the thing. They all were having dreams of Jesus appearing to them. Here's what happened. When Jesus appeared to them in a dream, they believed whatever he said. It's it, it's a wrap. Jesus appeared, just like he said, it's Jesus, so whatever David does, and it must be right. David systematically destroyed all those people's lives. He broke up several marriages. I mean, these people were homeless because they weren't working. They were struggling. Listen, they were driving cars because he worked them all night long. They would have a car wreck. It was the same thing he's doing up here. He was doing it in St. Louis. And I told David, he said, you're going to be a, you gonna traitor on me, ain't you, brother? You, you ain't going to be that tra- I'm so sick of that traitor, that traitor. When you stand for righteousness, you're called a traitor. You know that. Oh, I told him, I said, David, you need to straighten up. I'm going to tell you one more time. You're going to have to sit down. You're going to have to stop all this ministry. You are not fit. You're not well. Not fit. You, you've got to sit down. If you go ahead and do ministry again, you're going to have to get under accountability to a pastor, a local church, your wife. Now, his wife, oh, my God, she endured adultery after adultery. I don't think she did it. Now, now Tabitha was engaged to somebody else when she first started coming to his church. Mm-hmm. And David broke her up from her guy she was engaged with and married her. He broke that relationship, prophesied and maneuvered her. And that's how she got married. She already had a relationship. He broke that relationship up. And that's how he got her. And she endured adultery after adultery after adultery after adultery. And she still tried to work with him. But she called me one day and told me, I've left David. I'm done with him. I caught him in an affair with two different women at the same time. He's messing with two different women. And I told him, this is it. I'm done. Oh, let me tell you something. When he, when he tried to tell her she couldn't go and don't go, because that was his get-out-of-jail card. As long as she stood by him, he right. could always say, people are lying on me. I ain't cheating. Look at my wife. She's staying with me. Yeah. She left him. Let me tell you something. He told his kids that she's going to die. He told everybody God's going to judge him. He told all this stuff to people and tried to destroy her life. He had that woman. See, because he's a minister, he can go on and claim that he doesn't have any income. You know, he can, he can, he can claim that the church is taking care of him. And he don't have a real low salary. But see, the church will pay for all the stuff for him, and he'll claim a low low salary on right. income tax. Right. So when you go to court, you ain't got no money. You're only making twelve thousand dollars a year as a minister. That's nothing to give. That's nothing to give to uh, child support. Right. So here's this here's this woman destitute, trying to take care of two kids, living in a one bedroom apartment. He did her so wrong, so wrong. and he threatened her. If you don't stop. If you don't stop talking and telling people, I'm going to not give you. I'm gonna make sure you won't get anything. Now this is what his wife is telling me. This is what he did. Okay, let's fast forward. He comes to Detroit. And um, he tries to preach for uh, Glenn Plummer's television television network. So I, I promptly called over there and told him, you don't need to have this guy on there. He just got to do a scandal. And David came to meet me in the lobby at the Ritz Carlton Hotel. That's where the pastor wanted me to meet him and have it out. And David sat there at that table and he was mad. He was 
series, I said, listen, I said, you better stop hollering at this table. First thing you'll stop doing is hollering. I said, because you know I know what you've done. You, 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 you're, 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 you're a Judas. You're a traitor. Uh, you, 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 you're unforgiveness. God's not going to bless you. And so the pastor, I said, I said, he slept with over 13 women down there. David said, he jumped up on the table in front of the pastor and said, that's a lie. That's a lie. It was only nine. Can I, hey, said, hey, uh, uh, Marlon, Pastor Marlon. Let me just tell you, and everybody that's watching, even if you're in the in the movement, he will not explain anything to you. He's just going to say it's a lie. That's his. That's the line. He don't have to explain anything. It's a lie. You can. That's just his thing. It's a lie. That's absolutely. And, and, and well, I'm, I'm relating to this. Well, he just gets on there and makes a disclaimer all the time and just says it's not true. Right. And what are you going to do? And here's the thing. Here's what people don't understand. He picks on people and draws people in. And once he gets them in, let me tell you something. He takes so much, he takes a deep advantage of these people. He sexes the women. Mm -hmm. He takes the money for he drains them for money, and he emasculates the men. Oh, in St. Louis, he was slapping men and, and beating men up. He was doing all, he was slapping people, men around, treating them like little kids. And they were taking it because they was afraid that they were going to be cursed. And he told them that people die when they come against them, and they need to receive correction. He would break these people down and mostly have them up all night long. You know, sleep deprivation is a cold move. Keep people up all night long. They get disorientated. It's a control mechanism. He did all these things to these people, and he left them high and dry. Most of them don't go to church nowhere. Most of them don't want to be in church anywhere. He destroyed the lives and led them all astray. He came here to Detroit and told that in front of that pastor he only slept with nine. The pastor said, whoa, you slept with nine different women at your church? So he canceled that meeting for David. David was furious with me. But here's the next thing that happened. Ken Clement came to Detroit and did the, the revival with C.O. Johnston Church, mm. Church on the Rock. And it went on for like two years. It was successful. And so at the end of that, you know, C.O. Johnston was looking for, he wanted to keep revival going. Mm -hmm. But Ken Clement said, hey, I'm not, I'm done. I'm not going to keep going. So here comes, he meets David. Somehow he meets David and gets involved with David now. I had one of the pastors of the church come to me and say, what do you know about this? And he's a mutual friend of mine. He says, hey, man, what do you know about this guy, David? You ever heard of this guy named David Taylor? I said, yeah, I've heard of him. He said, what do you think about him? I said, listen, stay away from him. Don't get involved with him. He says, well, it's too late, man, because see, my pastor has him coming to preach, and he's been here for weeks doing meetings. I said, really? Mm -hmm. I said to him, I said, you go tell your pastor what I said. Tell him that David Taylor is going to destroy his ministry and take it's going to completely steal and destroy his ministry. When he's done with him, he won't have a ministry left. He said, man, I don't know how to tell CL that. I said, you better tell him that. Now, get this, is funny. He was over there the whole time. Now, before David was there, he went to another church in Chicago and preached for this large uh, Latino church there, which I knew. He begged me to fly down there to see that he has changed, he's reformed, and he's undercovering now. I want you to see how God's using him. I'm going to buy you a plane ticket. Now, here's me, years later, still trying to reach out to him, still trying to be merciful, still trying to believe in him. I flew out there. I get to this church. And he's doing the same thing, telling the same lies about the millionaire bought him a Mercedes Benz and telling the same stories he's been telling for years that I know is all lies. And I said, okay, you haven't changed. I'm thinking to myself, I'm sitting in a meeting and the pastor started snubbing me. They started just like ignoring me, snubbing me, like wouldn't let me walk in with the pastors, put me in another section. I'm like, I've been to this church. I know these people. Why do they treat me this way? Mm. I said, you know what? I'm leaving. I got my plane ticket and I left. And I told one of the elders, I said, I'm leaving. But I'm going to tell you something about it. the reason why I came here. I told him the whole story. I said, I came here because he promised that he had changed. I said, he hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. I said, you tell your pastor that he's going to destroy your church, divide your members, and he's going to sleep with your women in your church. I said, it's going to be a big mess. I went down like five things. I said, guarantee I said, tell, I said, when this happens, go tell your sister because she was married to the pastor's son and tell the pastor what I said. Uh, what It wasn't two months later. The, the, uh, the head apostle called me on the phone. And he says, well, why, why didn't you tell me about David when you were there? I said, because you all ignored me and you didn't talk to me and you wouldn't speak to me. He said, well, David told us that you were you were, you were were struggling with sexual sin and you came there to get delivered. And, and you were in trouble and you, yeah. you were ungodly. And I said, so he told, he got me to come there, but told you all I was in all kinds of sexual sin when really he's the one. I said, well, I'm sorry that happened to you all. It went down. It was terrible. Then he came to a Detroit after that. And now this time, I'm his bitter enemy at this point. He really can't stand me. He hates my guts at this mm -hmm. point. So he comes to Detroit. He starts at Steel Johnson's church, and he's going on and on. Now, back and forth, people are coming from my, coming to my church that's been to his meetings. And one lady came to me and told me, she said, I used to be, my husband used to be a, a criminal, and he has several, he has millions of dollars held up in court. And David says he has the keys to bind and loose and release anything. And, and I went to David and asked him, would he, would he release it in court? And would he release it from him? 
And he told me that the only way he could release it is if you were going to give that money to the ministry. Otherwise, you can't release it for it. And she came and asked me, is this true? Is that right? I said, that is lies and hypocrisy. Please. And, and don't believe in that nonsense. And she was, let me tell you something. She was actually scared to accept what I was saying. She acted like she was like, are you serious? I said, there's no truth in the Bible. I said, my God is not giving us no power to do that. Every oath, I mean, it was back and forth. People were coming, women, trouble coming my way. People, I'm like, listen, this is incredible. So what happens is, fast forward, he's at Phil Johnson's church, and the church had, had several hundred members when he, when, he, when he came there, when he first got there. Um, after David was there for almost a year, it was down to like 50 or 60 people on Sunday. They couldn't pay the notes. They were behind in their bills. Now, mind you, David was collecting hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars from people, from donors who were coming to the meeting. Mm. People, I know people that gave him $500,000. I mean, they were just giving this guy money. Wow. They had a dream. They see Jesus, and they're giving the money. Yep. David had the money, but he wasn't sharing it with Seal Johnson. Mm. Seal Johnson was, was about to be foreclosed on, about to lose his church. The bank was going to take it back. David said, I'm not going to let it happen, Dad. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back down. I'm going to help you. He went down there and made a deal with the bank and negotiated and paid it off and got the church put in his name and didn't even tell Seal Johnson. Seal Johnson called Wicked. out of the blue. Now, I've never had a phone conversation with Pastor Seal Johnson in my life. He gets my number from somebody and calls me. Are you Marlon Reed? I said, yeah. I'm Pastor Seal Johnson. I said, yeah, I know who you are. He said, well, I want to talk to you about David Taylor. I said, brother, you about two years and two late to call me about David Taylor. He says, ah, God, God, I know. And he starts telling me all this stuff that David did like. Right? And he said, well, I came in and I caught David in the bed with one of the young ladies at our church in my house. And they had their clothes on, but they were in the bed under the covers. And he said, when I walked in on them, David got out of the bed and down the ground and got on the knees and said, oh, Dad, thanks for coming. I was tempted. I was about to fail. God sent you here to keep me from falling. And he went through this whole, let me tell you something. David Taylor can get on the ground and grovel and crawl like nobody knew. I've seen him do it several times when he wants to manipulate people. Yeah. That's the thing you understand about David. Oh, that's what snakes do, you know. Oh, you have to understand this about David Taylor. He doesn't care what he gets you to do as long as he can get you to do it. See, he's a sociopath, pathological liar, megalomaniac. He doesn't really care. He doesn't care what he gets you to do. He doesn't care if he makes you mad, makes you happy, makes you sad, turns you on, turns you off. He doesn't care. He gets off on the fact that he can control you. He's a control maniac. He's a, he gets off on making people angry. He likes to incite anger and see if he can push your buttons to make that's what he's a man. He's a witchcraft. He's a warlock. He yes, wants he to is. Control I believe people. it. I believe and it. I believe so, it. So, C.L. Johnson told him, you know what? I'm going to, you know what, David? You need to get married. I know that. I need to get married. My flesh. I'm a young man. I'm a lion. He keeps telling him, right? I'm I said, yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that before. I what heard that 150 that? times when I was with him. Lord, I'm no, a I'm lion. <laughs> David told, he told David he was going, he was going to cover him and pray for him. He's being merciful to him. This is what David does. So fast forward, after he catches him again with something, he tells David, this is the last time. I'm not coming to the crusade this week. I'm not going to be there. And he said, what do you mean you're not coming? He said, I'm done. He said, after this one, David, this is going to be the last one. We're done. Oh, no, we're not done. He said, oh, yeah, we're done. He said, no, we're not done, punk. He calls this 75-year-old man a punk. I can hear no, it. Punk. I can done. hear it. And see, I said, Seal Johnson, I said, I said, Pastor Seal, he called you a punk. He said, yeah, he called me a punk. He called me other names. And he said, you're not going, I'm not going anywhere. You going somewhere. <laughs> and 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 the guy went down. He said, you, you David said, you're gonna find out this Tuesday who the boss is. Tuesday, they evicted CO Johnson from the building. This man who had been pastoring for years. Wicked. Okay. Seventy something year old man now Wicked. is having church in his living room. Okay. I, I lost the entire ministry and everything. And David appoints one of the associate pastors and makes him the pastor. And he's moving on. And doing his thing. Let me tell you something. David has been systematically doing this stuff at that church. Now I met one of the young people that told me, they said, you know, all those crutches and wheelchairs and canes, he keeps them off in the storage place. And he brings them out and takes pictures with him like he's emptying out wheelchairs and crutches. He bought and canes. those. I heard all, they bought them. The, I heard uh, they bought them. I heard one time they bought them. Somebody said they went to the nursing home and borrowed them for those pictures. So I don't know. You know. Listen, they borrowed them. And he never bought it back. And the young woman got fired from her job <laughs> because she allowed him to come and take all those wheelchairs and stuff. He wheels them out. See, this is all the con. He wheels all that stuff on there. These are visual effects. He puts them on the stage. And see, here's, here's the trick that David did. I've been watching him for over 18 years. David says, Jesus is wonderful. Everybody agrees. Jesus is the highest and the greatest. Everybody agrees. 
He lifts up Jesus so high. Oh my God, he lifts up Jesus so high. And the worship is awesome. And he says, you see how high Jesus is? Yeah. He says, and that's me right next to him. I'm right next to him. Mm -hmm. He takes the glory from Jesus and transfers it on himself. He lifts up Jesus and then he puts himself. I'm the best friend of Jesus. I remember one day distinctly having a conversation with him. When I went to his house in St. Louis, he had a picture on the wall. It was a poem. It was like a, a dream that one of his members had. And at the end of the dream, it said, David E. Taylor, your, the Lord was saying in the dream in this, in this little writing, David, your hunger and thirst for me has attracted me and gathered, got my attention. You, and then at the bottom it says, you're going to be Earth's greatest end time general. I looked at that, I said, David, I said, what is that? Oh, that's a dream one of the saints said. They put it in a plaque, you know, so I said, will you believe that? What, what, what do you think about it? I said, Earth's greatest, I said, Earth's greatest end time general. I said, what, what the heck does that mean? Well, you know, um, God is, I said, David, do you know how many anointed and powerful men <laughs> around this world that God has raised up? And you're going to be Earth's, Earth's, not the Mars, not the moon. You're going to be Earth's, the entire Earth's greatest end time general. I said, you ever heard of, you ever heard of John G. Lake? You ever heard of Smith Woodworth, Catherine Coleman? You ever heard of all these great, s'more, Cirillo? I said, I said, that's not even logical. Well, you know, but the Lord, I had a dream where the Lord gave me a crown. And he started telling me, I said, David, you need to take that off your wall. And you need, not, you need not to tell anybody else that because that sounds like some nonsense. You're yeah. going to get in trouble for that. He said, I see what you're saying. I see. It. You know, he took it down yeah. while I was there. But then the next time I came over, it was back on the wall again. I said, yeah, he believes he's Earth's greatest end time general. Here's another thing. He's calling me, telling me, I've had this dream. Jesus said, I said, David, I said, David, what is the point of all these dreams from Jesus? Well, what do you mean? I said, Jesus is the head of the church. He's the most important person yeah. in the church. I said, when he comes to talk to you, he has a message for you to give to the church. I said, Jesus is sitting around telling you how he likes your clothes and you like your shoes and the way you dress and your style. I said, why is Jesus wasting all this precious, as bad as the church needs to hear from Jesus? Exactly. I said, David, it doesn't make any sense what you're telling me. So you don't believe Jesus is appearing to me, fellas? I said, David, I couldn't go to court and swear that I believe he's visiting to you. That's what you say. I don't know. I believe that you believe he's visiting you. I said, but I don't know if he is or not. I don't know if it's true. And I said, I'm going to tell you something else. Your problem when you go to these churches, see, I mean, there's nothing you don't understand. See, he was having a lot of pastors reject him at this time. I said, what you don't understand is these are pastors, bishops, leaders, apostles who have raised up churches and they pastor people. And here you come in half their age telling them that Jesus is taking you to lunch and you hand about waterfalls of Jesus. And you're going to heaven every day. I said, do you know what that means? I said, Bishop Patterson is not going to give you authority in his church. Why? Because he's the presiding bishop of an entire organization. Mm-hmm. Here you come telling him that Jesus is meeting you. The head of the body of Christ is meeting with you, not with him. I said, do you know that you're by, automatically you're insinuating that you're above him when you come in his church. Mm-hmm. By proxy, you're, mm-hmm. you're insinuating. I said, right. nobody's going nobody's to take time to do that. Nobody's going to let you come in a church and take authority like that because they don't know. You, I, I, you think this? Really, fella? I said, oh, I know that's what they think because they ain't buying it. Well, you believe I visit Jesus? I said, David. I said, listen, nobody cares that Jesus is visiting you. I said, let me tell you something. My life is no better because Jesus appeared to me. I don't have any more money. I don't, I'm not have, I don't have any more anointing. I don't have anything because Jesus appeared to you. That's like you have a million dollars and don't do nothing for me. Mm-hmm. I see. I see what you're saying. I said, now, if your ministry could make me see Jesus, I said, that would be something. I said, mm-hmm. but yeah. you're talking about all the time. You get a preacher about all these business things. I said, people don't care about that. He said, I see. I'm going to tell you something. After I told him that, the next year, he came out with face-to-face visitation books. Mm. I am not lying. Wow. And he started preaching. See, here's what people don't understand. There's something called, in science, called quantum entanglement. Quantum entanglement is when you get many, many minds and spirits together and energy together, and you get them in unity. It happens in worship. You do it all the time when you lead worship. Benny Hinn does it when he leads mm-hmm. worship and gets everybody into unity. There's an energy, there's a power in agreement that happens. It's called a quantum entanglement. Okay? Mm-hmm. This is a metaphysical as well as a, this is, this is also a physics uh, concept. So, okay, so when David starts teaching on dreams and visions and visions, seeing Jesus, this is what he's talking about. When you come in agreement with David and believe in it, it opens you up to start having dreams. Yes. It opens your spirit up to start having dreams, to start having these experiences. And so when you have them, you like, man, this guy has opened up something. Because you get around, it's the same thing that happens if you get around a person who's highly anointed. And gifted in a certain way. You hang around them long enough, that anointing will ignite in you. Sometimes the gifts were igniting you. The similar gifts are like Elijah and Alicia. They follow one of the gifts were transferred. Guess what? The 
demons can transfer. Spirits can transfer the yeah. same way through warlocks and witchcraft. Mm -hmm. right. The same way. The Bible says that um, in Corinthians, um, Paul says that Satan has transformed himself as an angel of light. He's transformed himself as a demonic deceiving spirit. And his ministers in Second Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 11, and he says his ministers have become ministers of righteousness. He said these false apostles, okay? What is happening to people is that we love Jesus as Christians, and that's the greatest thing in the world is to see Jesus. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't want to see Jesus. Well, here's the thing about that. The Bible does see, Brother Hagin, my spiritual father, always taught us, whenever you get out beyond the promises of God, and you start asking for things that God has not promised you, the devil will come in and accommodate you. Mm -hmm. And when you start, you know, we don't seek visions and seek dreams. We yeah. seek to be led by the Holy. As many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Mm -hmm. And Jesus never promised that he was going to come and visit every believer in the body of Christ. Because here's the one thing. The Bible says that in Romans 8, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And it says we have a witness that bears witness with our spirit that we're the children of God. Amen. That's talking about the inner witness inside your inner man. This is the number one way that God leads his children. It's through the inner witness. It's not through talking, through audible voice. It's through the witness of the spirit. Mm -hmm. It is a peace or no peace. It's mm -hmm. a grieving or no grief. Mm -hmm. When the woman had the spirit in her in the book of Acts chapter 16, and she was following Paul, she followed Paul many days and said, hey, them that are men of God. She was agreeing with Paul. Mm -hmm. But Paul said he was grieved in his spirit. When he got grieved is when he turned and commanded that spirit to come out. Why? He was following the inner witness. When the witness... He followed the unction of the Holy Ghost. Mm. The book of John says we have an anointing. You have an anointing. You have an anointing that teaches you all things. You need not even man to teach you anything. Mm. But this anointing will not lie. The devil can manufacture dreams. He can manufacture visions. Absolutely. He can manufacture yeah. false tongues. Mm -hmm. He can manufacture miracles. He can manufacture everything. There's two things, three things he can't do. He can't tell the truth and he can't love. Okay? And the other thing he can't do is he cannot manufacture the inner witness that's inside of you because you're sealed. To the, by, you're sealed by the Holy Ghost on your inner room. You're born again, that's Christ in you. He, he, he can't manufacture that inner witness. That's why the number mm -hmm. one way, that's why when somebody's preaching something, the inner witness inside, the grieving of the Spirit, the the, 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 the peace. The Bible says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man should see the Lord. And let the peace of God rule and reign in your heart. Let it be the umpire deciding. Now, what's an umpire do? An umpire calls the place, say, mm -hmm. not say, in or out. He said, let the peace of God mm -hmm. be the umpire in your heart. Mm -hmm. Not visions, dreams, and anything else. Mm -hmm. And see, since it's the number one way God wants us to be led is by our spirit, David is getting people to want to see. The Bible says we walk and see, in order to be led by our inner man, we can't operate in fear. We have to operate in faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. The opposite of faith is sight, not fear. Operating, judging by the outward man. Now, here's the thing very quickly I want to share this with you. This is what people get deceived with. We, 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 you, you don't hear from God when you're afraid he don't speak to you. When you, oh, I'm scared, I can't hear from God. No, it's faith. Paul said, when you go to God, make your request with joy. We go with joy, believing that he hears us. Like John says, if he hears us, he will do it for us. He will answer us. So we go with faith, believing that he's mm -hmm. going to hear us when we pray. So we walk by faith and not by right, sight. Right. See, David is doing the exact opposite. He wants people to walk by sight, seeing visions and seeing Jesus. But Peter tells us, though you have not seen him, mm -hmm. you love him. Though you have not seen him, you have filled with an unexplainable joy on the inside of you and, and receiving the end of your faith. Mm -hmm. The apostle the apostle Peter, who is the real friend of Jesus, who walked with Jesus for yeah. three and a half years on his ministry, he said to the New Testament church, though you have not seen him, that goes to show you that he wasn't teaching them that Jesus was supposed to appear to everybody. Mm -hmm. He said, though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you have not seen him, mm -hmm. you still are waiting on him. He didn't teach that. And then Jesus tells Thomas when he's doubting him, he says, put your hand in my side. Touch it. He puts his hand in the wound of his hand. He puts his wound hand in the wound of Jesus' side. And he says, my Lord and my God. And Jesus says, you believe because you've seen it? He says, yes, Lord. He said, more blessed, blessed are yes. they that have not seen mm -hmm. Amen. I still believe. See, David is taking people out of those, of, of different, mm -hmm. uh, away from those truths. Mm -hmm. And this demonic spirit comes in to manipulate and 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 to seduce people they read that book if you read that book you're being subject to it yes now, can I, anything you consider you open your heart to that's how it works you know we were talking today uh earlier and i like you to share with them uh and and ever since i got the phone with you today i'm thinking about what you said about that thing on the back of his neck and how he walks and oh, his nails oh, and his feet. you've got to share that because you said he was with a uh uh 
a lady that was from another country or during that sure. time during that sure. time in st louis this is this is almost 18 years ago can you believe that he's been doing this stuff for 18 years it's gonna stop this year this is the year amen well i've been waiting for it well, listen here's the thing he tells us now let me tell you something i know david you see david acting a fool on here screaming and all that people talking about he's a king and yeah, how authoritative he is and he's just all this power he just nobody can take the power he's walking in right. and saying something. Yeah. when we had him <laughs> so right <laughs> With all that stuff he had done, he was on the floor like a little kid, cowering, crying, looking all weak, and uh, he was like, and when we had him down like that, oh, uh, wasn't no, wasn't no strong talking. You know what? Mm -hmm. He started talking sensibly, and 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 one of the pastors, Paul Sherrill, Paul Sherrill is, is in is in Maryland. He, if you could get him on here, he would tell you the exact well, same story. Well, he was well, a we'll him on one night. Paul Sherrill said that David told him that of the women he had slept with, he slept with this foreign woman who he believed was in witchcraft. And he said, ever since he slept with that woman, David confided said, ever since he slept with that woman, because we were like, what makes you, why, you, now, he had a, now Tabitha is a beautiful woman. She's gorgeous. A beautiful woman. You've got a beautiful wife, you've got a family. Why are you leaving your wife and having sex with all these women? Let me tell you something. David had a, had a home. There was a pastor in the city that was letting David use his house. Like, David was claiming to go on Shelly. And I want you to know something about David. He never been able to fast more than two or three days. That's a lie. He, he can't fast. He never been able to fast. You can look at him and tell him he don't do no fast. Okay? He was telling everybody he's going on a consecration. I'm going to go shut away. I'm going to shut away. He would go to this little house and stay in this little room. And this is where he would invite the women to. I believe one on, it. One on Monday. One would come on Tuesday. One would come on Friday. He was had them in rotation. Okay? This is what the women told him. They all, they didn't even know they were doing this until they all got together and found out they were doing this. Okay? He said he took a woman and he slept with her. And he said ever since he slept with that woman, he had this insatiable appetite to just have sex. It's just constantly. And he said, and, then, and so we said, well, you need the devil cast out. <laughs> we said, you need to go through deliverance. You need to go through deliverance. You need to get into counseling for being a serial adulterer and sex addiction. You need to put your wife in counseling because she's been abused by you. Mm -hmm. I said, your kids might even need counseling. Mm -hmm. It was terrible. Let me tell you something. David Taylor's hands begin to look like a vampire's hands. Oh, yeah, they're yellow. I always said, what's the His claw, his, his fingernails are pointed like a vampire. His feet, let me tell you something. He was wearing sandals one day, and his feet looked like the feet of a werewolf. I'm not lying. I looked at him, I said, what is going on with your feet, bro? I just looked down laughing, and I said, man, you need to go get him done. Oh, he wanted to give me some excuse. I said, David, what is wrong with your hands? Let me tell you something. He began to develop a hump in the back of his neck. You see, you see, it's still and there. Then, right in between his shoulder blades, he has a hump where he's slushed over, and you watch the way he walks. You see, when you let spirits cohabitate oh with you, God. They, they alter you. Now, now I'm going to say something that mm. people that are not familiar with this may be struggle with this, okay? But if you know people that live in Africa, if you know the men of God that live in Africa, now Africa is very different from America, okay? In Africa, millions of people believe in the supernatural. They believe in demons. Now, Benson Idaho is a great apostle over there said, if, if, if the, wish I could tell you in three days you're going to be a monkey. He said, three days you're going to be a monkey because they have power. Supernatural. Now, in America, we insulated from all that. Over there, the power of the devil, what they have over there is shapeshifters, okay? Mm -hmm. These spirits get in people's bodies, and they cohabitate. Some of them go willingly into voodoo, trances, mm -hmm. and these devils literally transform their bodies and change and alter the way they are. It's the other end of the spectrum of the transgender movement. The transgender wants to do it through science, but the other end of the spectrum is through the supernatural. It's all altering the image of God, destroying the image of God. Same spirit working together. Mm. Over there, it's in the supernatural. Over here, it's through the blade and the knife because we're given to intellectualism and science. Mm -hmm. Over there, they're given to spiritualism. It's the same mm -hmm. spirit that wants to destroy the image of God. Mm -hmm. They get involved with these people, and there's a transference of spirits. Mm. David picked that spirit up. Let me tell you something. He has a a spirit on him that has actually deformed his body. Okay? And, yeah, really, it has altered his look. It's altered his body. You know, his own family is not even aware of the things that he does. His mom and them, they, his mom and family, he has successfully kept all this stuff shielded and happened. So now, C.O. Johnson lost the church, and that's when he called me. I said, I wish you had called me two years ago. But see, here's the thing. Nobody wants to believe it then. Because they, they want to believe it. See, Christians, we're nice. We want to believe the best of people. We want to believe that people are telling us the truth. We want to believe in supernatural things. So he was believing in David until it became evident that David was nothing that he claimed to be. Mm. Now, C.L. Johnson was out living on his boat with his wife. And one night, tragically, he slipped over the side. A 75-year-old man falling into Lake Michigan, the Detroit River. The undercurrent, undercoat, even, even seasoned divers don't go into the water. 
This man got caught. God bless his heart. He passed away. He died. I went to his funeral. I know his wife. And of course, the first thing David does is inbox me and says, you're next. If you don't stop talking about my music, you're going to be, you're going to die just like C.O. Johnson died. And he put it on Facebook. Judgment has come against C.O. Johnson because he spoke to me. Mm-hmm. You're talking about tasteless. You're talking about no class. You're talking about hateful. You're talking about vindictive. Why would you put that up on Facebook about this man dying tragically? He died because he came against my ministry. Let me tell you something. That was a, that was a, that was an accident. That had nothing to do with David. Nothing Everybody else, David curses, don't none of them die because he don't have that kind of power. He don't have that power. He, he thinks he's Jesus. Let me tell you something. A woman recently, she's involved with David. She's having these sexual dreams. And uh, she dreamed that she was having sex with David. And she woke up and she said she woke up from the dream. And she felt like like, like somebody was in the bed with her. And as soon as she woke up and she was groggy, the phone text went off. And she looked, it was David texting her. And she said, oh my God, I felt like you were here in the room. You know what David told her? I am. I was. You see, that's what you call astral projection. That's what witches and warlocks get into. And they get into that, it's called astral projection. This woman is having a sexual dream about this guy. And he's going to text her the moment she wakes up. What's the chances of that? She wakes up from a nightmare. And this is what people, this is the kind of stuff I've been hearing for 18 years with this man. And I'm going to tell you something. It's like when they go over there and read that book and they buy into it, every one of them looks like they're under a hypnotic spell. I have seen them out. It's like they don't even... It's like the, I've seen people under post-hypnotic suggestion. It, it just doesn't compute. It, it, nothing else makes any sense. And David starts talking, and they start listening. And it's a spirit. It is a demonic spirit. You come from a foundation of holiness and Pentecost. Mm-hmm. You have a foundation in you that you came from that you could eventually break. When you saw two, two plus two, you made the, you did the math and said, "I'm out. I gotta get out of here." Yeah. You shook yourself and got out of it. But there are people who don't have the foundation. Mm, David is the first, he's the first uh, experience they've had with church. And Mm. then he's wrapped up in this stuff. And listen, they don't know where to go. Here's what happens. He takes advantage of these people so badly. He takes their money. They're broke. Their families are broken up. Women, he'll sleep with them, sex them up for months, years, take their money. Years. Break break their marriages up. Get this. And when he's done with them, they're so embarrassed. They're so ashamed that they don't want to tell anybody. They want to run away and hide and don't want to go to church. And this is how David has survived. Because he's picked on women and people that he can bully, that he can intimidate, that he can fear and can scare. And listen, they're so ashamed. Who wants to admit that you gave a half a million dollars away to a man that slept with you and he was lying to you and you broke your marriage up? When you came to the ministry, you was married and had money. Now you're broken and you have nothing. The whole destiny has been that story, I've heard that story over and over and over since I made my confession in December. Over and hey. over and over. He broke up my marriage. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I've been with him for five years. And, Vicki, I'm devastated. What am I going to do now? You know? They don't want to tell anybody. Now, here's another thing. I had a guy, a guy contacted me and told me. He said, listen, I was just, I mean, this is, this, is, this is what's wild. People call me out of the blue and ask me, are you who you are? I tell him, uh, you know who David Taylor is? I'm like, oh, God. Here we go, now, who are you? <laughs> here we go again. I'm not, I'm not lying. I'll be, I'll be walking through the mall and get a phone call from somebody who wants to talk about David Taylor. And this particular guy's daughter is caught up in game of mine. And he says, listen, I want to get my daughter out of this cult. He says, my daughter had a scholarship to go to Michigan State or U of M, one of those colleges. She didn't gave it up to go live with David. He said, my ex-wife and I got divorced. He said, he said I'm a successful man. He said, she got $2.5 million in the settlement. Okay, she got 2.5 million. She got a lot of money and a house, and she got the kids. I don't mind taking care of my kids. Fine. He said my, my wife was always really super spiritual and deep and extreme. And he said eventually it broke up our marriage. He said we were moving to a brand new house, and she want to move out, saying the spirits in the house. She mm. can't sleep there anymore. He said I went through this stuff. I tried to work with my wife, but when she wanted to leave me, he said I let her leave because it was just a strain. He says she gets hooked up with this cat today, Taylor. He says and she, one day I'm getting subpoenaed to come to court. I go to court with my lawyer. She wants to sue me for more money in a settlement. Mm-hmm. And my lawyer says, hey, we gave her half the fortune. She took half the money already. And she's claiming she don't have no money, can't take her to kids, and she's lost her house. Mm-hmm. And so this guy says, well, you know, I don't think I should give her any more money. I've already settled that. I think she'd come back and ask, you know, claiming duress and all this mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And he said, your kid's staying with her. So they go to court. His lawyer 
digs up and says, where did the, she's wired money out of her account. She gave away a million dollars. Who did she give it to? Jay Lemire. Mm. Gave a million dollars to him and went, lost her house, lost everything, and kept giving the money. I did the thing. So this guy says, you know what? You need to call David Taylor to court and subpoena him. Oh, so David says, oh, I'm a liar. You don't want to fight with me. I'm a warrior. You're not going to win. So he comes in the courtroom, and this guy goes to him and says, you know, he introduces himself. He's talking to David. He says, you know, uh, well, Brother uh, Reverend Taylor, he says, uh, you know, my wife doesn't have a place to live. She lost her money. She doesn't have anything, and she gave you a million dollars of her money. That's money that I gave her for our kids and family. He said, can you see your way to give that money back to her? And David started laughing. He said, I'm not giving her that money back. He said, you can't get it back because she gave it to a church and to a ministry. You can't get that money back. I don't have to get that money back. He started laughing. He said, well, don't you care that you want your devoted followers is, doesn't have a place to stay and struggle? He says, yeah, he says yeah. I'm not giving her that money back. He says, well, all right, well, all right, David. David laughed in his face. So the judge didn't like David. When he heard about this stuff, the judge was like, mm. he, didn't, he saw what was happening. And she's like out of her mind on the on witness stand. The judge told her. Don't give another dime to this ministry. We're going to have a court adjournment. He said, don't give him any more money. She had given him 10 grand. They came out to court, and they said she gave him 10 grand. They arrested her for contempt court. This is how bad this woman was to be persecuted for David, and he don't care nothing about her. No. So this guy says, you know what? He says, I want to do a deposition with the judge. He asked us to petition the court for a deposition. We want to ask David Taylor questions about the money. If, he want, if my wife wants me to give another million dollars or whatever, I think I deserve it. And the judge allowed it. They went into a room. They sat down with a camera and with a lawyer. David didn't even have a lawyer. He had to get somebody that day. Brought him in that room, and that's the deposition that you see on yeah. YouTube of them being asked all those questions. See, this is why people think that was the IRS. and people think that was, was why didn't he go to jail? Well, see, that wasn't the IRS. That wasn't the government. That was just in a civil court, and it was just a deposition. Now, David was foolish enough to go in there and give all these answers and tell all this stuff because mm -hmm. he don't know. He don't know what he's doing. He, and his lawyer was just sitting there looking like, wow, you did that. You know? And so the next thing, when David realized they videotaped it, he realized how damaged it could be. So he went to the court and his lawyer asked that they would strike it or put a gag on it that they couldn't be able to release it. And the judge said, no, you're a reverend. What you do is public. He said, I'm not going to put a gag on it. And immediately this guy went out and uploaded it and put it on the internet. It didn't make a difference to it. What David did is went and got his daughter and told her, we got to come against him. He's trying to destroy the ministry. So she went out and made up a lie that he was a homosexual and a racist and a Ku Klux Klan and he made a video against her own father to try to destroy him. So that's what they do. Now, when you come out with him, he immediately tries to release something against you to discredit you. To discredit you so what you say about him don't mean it. It's like, it's eye for an eye. That's what he immediately is. He's intact. Exactly. Immediately. And it didn't really work because nobody really cared about what she had to say. People saw that. Well, yeah, he did it to you. Now, he's probably going to try to do something to me after he means I've been on this broadcast. It's okay. Hey, listen. It's okay. You know, yeah, I don't really care. There's nothing David Taylor can do to me. I mean, I, mean, I know him. I, listen, here's the thing. I don't hate him, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I, I don't have any animosity. Here's what I hate. I hear the lambs crying. Yeah. I hear the sheep dying. I hear people being killed and murdered by somebody who is supposed to represent Jesus. This hurts Jesus. me. And here's the thing. I used to be his friend, okay? We, we, we hung out in services together. We did ministry together. We, 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 he stayed at my house. I stayed at his house before I, but when I found out what he was into, I mean, I thought he was, I always thought he was weird. I just thought, okay, that's his weird thing. Yeah. You know, sister, sister, sister Yoey, you know, preachers are, are a different bunch. Yeah. None of them is alike. They all got quotes and got stuff. She overlooked stuff, but I, that stuff just kept coming up. Mm -hmm. I could not overlook. Mm -mm. I couldn't overlook. And so here's the thing. Every time I bust him out or go public with him, here come the church folk. That's wrong. You're judging. You shouldn't speak against him. We Can shouldn't talk it? about each other. I don't we care what they say. Him. I'm speaking out against him. I don't care what the church religious people say. Then you should, because the Bible says mock them that bring division among the church. Paul said, put that wicked one out from among us. Yeah, he's got to go. Oh, he's got to go. Yeah. Time's up. We, we yeah. love sheep. And we, 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 we forgive sheep. We restore sheep. We heal sheep. But we shoot and kill wolves. We don't let wolves yeah. keep living That's and killing the flock. Amen. And David is a wolf. He's a he's a megalomaniac. First of all, he is delusions of grandeur. Now, now, now Chris Sorensen was on here doing a broadcast. Yeah. And I met Chris Sorensen. I went with Chris Sorensen. On a, on a, he, he, they, I went with him and this other man that brought up the position. I went and we sat down and talked to uh, a lawyer, okay? Chris told us, I, I, and I'm listening to Chris tell me all the stuff that David had him doing. This is the thing that blew me away the most because I don't think he mentioned it yet.
the other night. I said, Chris, all this money raising, he has you all working all day in literally a sweatshop, raising mm -hmm. money and making money, man. Literally all day and night, you're making money. You, 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 you're, you're losing your lives in this place. And for what? What is it for? And Chris looked at me and he said, I said, what is he going to do, take over the world? He said, and Chris looked at me and said, um, yeah. I said, huh? He said, David has taught us privately that the face-to-face -face movement is going to bring Jesus back to earth. There's the Father, there's the Son, there's the Holy Ghost, and there's him underneath him. And he's going to stand with Jesus and judge the generation of people that didn't believe this message of the face-to-face. -face. I said, that's what he taught you. He said, yeah, he said it several times, him and Michelle. I said, what else did he tell you? He said, well, the goal is this, the face-to-face -face movement to reach from 2,000 to 20,000. And exponentially to go from 20,000 to 200,000. And from 200,000 to 2 million. And once it hits the 2 million part, it's going to go from 2 million to 20 million. Yeah. 200 million to yeah. 1 billion. And once we reach a billion people with the face to face message, it's going to cause Jesus to have to come back. And that's going to be the end of the world. That's going to happen. I looked at him and I said, Are you, I looked at him and I said, I said, Chris, are you serious? He said, Yeah, that's what they taught us. He's teaching these people that God has raised them up to conquer the earth. For Jesus. He's the earth's greatest intangible. As a matter of fact, he's the arch. He told these people he's a spiritual king. That's why he put the garments on like King Henry VIII coming out of him. He's a spiritual king. He's higher than an apostle. <laughs> Something that ain't even in the Bible. He's teaching these people all this Sorry. crazy stuff. And he's also been teaching a doctrine that's a very old doctrine. It's been, it was by some other reprobates that came up with this doctrine. It's the doctrine that whatever you do in your flesh is in your flesh and it doesn't matter in your spirit. Yeah. I've heard David teach that. That whatever you do in your flesh don't matter. For in case you can have an orgy, you're just in the flesh, and when Jesus comes back, he's going to give you a brand new body, it don't really matter. He teaches this. So that lets you know exactly what he believes in doing. He don't believe, he does he believe there is nothing that he won't do. There is nothing that he's not capable. I, I don't put anything past him. You know, anybody that's so preoccupied with homosexuals and calling everybody gay, and, and all this, you see, here's what I find, here's what I find about a homosexual. About, about
neighbor stays up all night, sleeps all day, as he does like a vampire. Mm-hmm. And she got up and do what women do. You know, they look on phones, look at the business, they sneak with a little snooker. You know, she snooped on his Facebook and she said she saw tons, scores of Facebook messages to women. Mm-hmm. And she began to open them up. And he's having the same conversation with all these women, telling them all the same things. And she, boy, she is ready to throw this computer through the, through the, through the window. And he's over there laying over there asleep. And she wakes him up and they give this big argument and he denies it. And he starts telling her that, uh, that's my assistant, the guy that drives for him. He, he's on here doing it. That's not me doing it. That's not me. I, I, she says, what? She says, what? He says, she said, that's you. He says, no, no, I let him get on my account. And he's on there doing it. That's not me doing it. And he starts telling all his lies. Okay, the jig is up. The relationship is over. And the moment she turned on him, you know what happened, right? Oh, All crazy. his staff started he's a calling traitor. her harassing her, calling her whore, devil, prostitute. Now, he didn't deny that he slept with her. He didn't deny that he slept with her. He, had, he didn't deny it at all. But he wants to call her a whore and a devil, and he demeaned this woman. You know what? And she went on about her business. I said, you should go public and tell him. She says, I'm just so sick of that I want to get away from him. Now, she got married, moved on with her life. I don't blame her for not wanting to come out and tell her stuff because she did recover and move on. But I remember, I remember the inboxes. I remember we on the phone. I remember what she told me, the things she told me. <clears throat> and it was a shame. It was terrible. This is the legacy of David Taylor Ministry. This is the legacy of what he does. He destroys, devours. Young people join his ministry. They don't go to college. They, they don't. don't. They, they said, you know, they, they, uh, I know one of them was telling me he calls it like a 20 year process. I'm like, a 20 year process? You gotta be kidding me. But you know what? I just believe that this is the year, and, and I, we're gonna let you go in just a moment, but I, you reminded me of something. I'm good. I'm good. When I was in Israel, I gotta tell y'all this. When I was in Israel, and uh, I was going through this situation where the Michelle and uh, Marcia said that. David said, well, they call him Apostle, but I call him David. David said that I've got to meet with them. And I said, no, I said, he's my boyfriend. Now, those two knew that we were, you know, they knew about, they know about all the women on the Israel trip. They, they know his shenanigans and stuff, which I didn't know that then. I said, he's my yeah. boyfriend. You know, if he's got a problem with me, you know, we can talk. Well, then yeah. Michelle texted me and he, she said, he said, if you don't receive us, you don't receive him. Absolutely. And, and so what I said in my in my spirit, I was thinking, listen, what man that loved me would want me to go sit in a room and these two women do it for an hour and a half? Those women talked to me like I was a dog for an hour and a half. Now, before I went in there, I said I was texting David and it was a big or, ordeal. I wasn't going to go to. I got off the bus. I was upset. I said, I'm not going to talk to y'all. And then I texted David and I said. I'm going to go public on Facebook and tell everybody we're dating. And then I told them, and then they started screaming at me. And I said, Michelle, I said, my friend, darling Bishop, which I, I consider her one, like a spiritual mother to me. I said, she told me, never let Michelle give you a message from um, from David ever. And she said, you, she's just over, over uh, the general apostle David. You're saying... She's nothing but trash. And then David, he tells you, you can tell Darling Bishop to go to H-E double hockey sticks. That's why he texted me oh, back. Wow. I said, she told me, never, never, never mess up your relationship to have this Michelle girl give you a message. And that's why I'm not going to meet with y'all because, and so David said, you can tell her to go to H-E double hockey sticks. Now, he, you got to be kidding me. So when, right. after we had that meeting, I've had that meeting, um, I walked out of that room after being uh, in I mean, just talking about it was a dog for an hour and a half. They told me pretty much I was worth nothing, but I could sing. And I remember when I walked out of the meeting, after an hour and a half, I kept thinking to myself, how could a man that says he's in love with me allow these two women to talk to me like I was a dog? And I remember when I walked out of that room, I was so brainwashed. I actually texted him and said, thank you. I probably, I'm sure I needed that. I'm probably full of pride, like you say. And he said, oh, yes. Wow. I said, but it was an hour and a half. He said, they should have did it longer. You're full of pride. And in my, come on, in, in a normal relationship, I would have told that guy to hit the road. Mm-hmm. Right. But I was so brainwashed. So much of what he's saying. You bought into the Jesus appearing to him. Let me tell you something. By the time you bought into all this stuff, you don't even know it has it's altered you and changed you from who you are. Common sense, everything. It, it, it disarms you. It completely and totally disarms you. And and it, it, here's the thing. Here's the worst thing about it. Yes, there's sexual abuse. There's, there's sexual impropriety. 
But you know the worst thing about it is he really, really abuses people emotionally. Oh my gosh. And the stars of people being with him, let me tell you something, most of them don't recover. No. They don't want to go to church. And so let me tell you something. True. Here's another thing. Thank you, Holy Ghost. See, what does deception do? What does deception do? What is the purpose of this of the devil transforming into an angel of light to deceive? Well, to lead you astray. Okay? Now, either that spirit's gonna lead you further into David and following David and going along with David, or the hard part about it is when you when a lot of these people break from him, they don't realize that the spirit that was operating in David, the whole goal was to lead them astray, right? right. They don't realize that they stop going to church. Mm -hmm. They stop getting oh, fellowship. Yeah, they, he's against so church it, a lot, yeah. So it still leads them astray. Even when they break from him, it still leads them away from the church. They can't get ministered to. They don't get the help they need. They don't get the teaching they need. They don't get the understanding. They, no. they, they, just, they just, you know what? And I'm, I know I, I get it. I'm sick of church. I don't want to be bothered with church. After David Taylor, I mean, you know, they talk about surviving R. Kelly. They ought to have a, a, a video called Surviving David we got, Taylor. We, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. we got to have because one. Because people surviving this person, the yeah. devastation that he leaves in families. I have never seen a demon that this, see, I've never seen a devil. See, it's that same spirit of order. The spirit that's powering the LGBT, the spirit that is powering all this transgender, shape-shifting, destroying identity, destroying mm -hmm. who we are. All that same spirit wants to destroy marriage. Right. Marriage is where children are born from, the family. You destroy family, you destroy marriages, you destroy family. You destroy right. family, you destroy identity of who people are. You know, this, first it was the destruction of what marriage is, same-sex marriage, LGBT. I don't know if you get mad at me for saying this, but it's an attack on marriage. When you, just start, when you start redefining what marriage is, you're destroying it. That's like saying, if you take Jesus, if you take 10% of anything away from Jesus or misinterpret it, you just change Jesus and it's no longer Jesus. Mm -hmm. You have to leave Jesus exactly the way he is in Scripture. When you change and alter marriage, you destroy the man, destroy the family, yeah. destroy the genders, all this stuff. See, that's a spirit that wants to break up marriages. I know men and women who David picked them against each other. And one chose David and one chose to leave and the marriage is ended. Not mm -hmm. one, not two, not three, not four, mm -hmm. not five. I'm mm -hmm. talking about several marriages over oh, wow. 18 years. You know Absolute what, uh, crazy. Uh, Pastor Marlon, you know, I was just thinking, I remember there would be times that I would I would send him a whole, uh, just Texas, just Texas, Texas, Texas of stuff that I, how I was feeling like I, I didn't feel like he was... I didn't feel like we were, you know, we were spending enough time together. He'd just say, I, lo I love you so much. You're so beautiful. I know I know he didn't even read it. And then I would just come at him again. And then he would say this, you know, you seem very unstable. Mm -hmm. That's so a trick, yeah. That's a trick. And I talked to all these women. And then I'd be thinking to myself, well, you know, maybe I'm, you know, he is a busy man. He travels all over the world and he's got all this stuff going on. Which really, now that I know it, he doesn't, he's not that busy. Okay, but. No. I, oh, no. I, he's busy with all the women. I know that now. David, David spends all his time uh, messing with women and talking on the internet. That's what it is. I know. People. I know Let now. But in my brain, I'm like, you know, he, he thinks I'm unstable. And I talked to all these women, you know, or I would say, you know, do you really love me? He said, I've proven my love for you. And when I first started talking to him, the first, within the first few days, I said, number one, let me tell you about me. I'm not a materialistic person. I do not, gifts are not my love language. That's what, now some of you ladies may go, Vicki, you're crazy. But that's not, one thing I, I really desired in a in man is just someone that would spend time with me, be with me, gifts. And I think that kind of threw him off with me because that's sure. what he does. So I said, so because you gave me a Jaguar, because you did this, because, okay, that's showing Don't you, you get that Jaguar back. Huh? <laughs> don't you get that Jaguar back. I don't care what nobody you're making No, what, you, what people don't know is he, he gave me $20,000, and he paid, he paid the car note. And so he stopped the car note. So if I paid it off right now, I still, I need $36,000 to pay it off. Oh, well, then, you know, do what you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted, to, I wanted to say that because a lot of people are telling me, you should be driving that car. Listen, I have no choice. I had a perfectly good Nissan Altima paid off. I blessed somebody that needed it. it I I had a great car, good condition. He said, we'll I want to be... We'll sanctify that car in the name of Jesus. Yes, the oil on it. yes, be all right. yes. I think it's going to be okay, but people say, and get we'll rid of that car. We'll sanctify those Vuittons, too. Don't give them back either. <laughs> I, I got them. I got them here. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I don't think I can walk in. They're like five, five... Five inches. I don't think I'm gonna be able to. I'm getting too old to walk in those shoes. But. That, see that? See that goes to show you. Just like the just like the young lady told me before, and like you're saying, he wants women to be sex objects. He doesn't even really want them to be natural, real relationships. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. just wants them to be somebody he can play with. He let me tell you something. 
he loves to conquer women. Mm -hmm. He loves to persuade them and hunt them down. And the more they resist him, the more he wants to keep coming after them and screwing yep. them. And, and he just, he just, it's, it's like, let me tell you something. It is like an adrenaline rush, as I told you before. Mm -hmm. He's a megalomaniac. He has delusions of greatness and grandeur and lavish stories. He's a pathological liar. He lies for no reason. He's told so many lies. It's unbelievable. He's a sociopath. Yeah. That means he has, he's incapable of any really true emotional attachment. No, no empathy people, at all. People around him are like cardboard cutouts. I and believe it. He moves it. them on his stage, and it's all about him. He's the center of the universe. He's a narcissistic, megalomaniac, sociopath, pathological liar. Mm -hmm. I actually think he has different split personalities. Because he'll get like a little boy sometimes. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, wait hang on. Kid. Hang on. When he calls you on the phone for the first... Hey, honey, how are you? You sound like a little baby. And all those women talked about it. How are you? And your mom like, I'm fine. I was like, kind of scary. How are you, sweetie? And you're like, where's that voice come from? It's kind of, it's, it's, now that I look back on it, you know, at first I thought, oh, he's being so sweet, but he's got some different things going on there. It's crazy. Listen, this guy, he, he, I told him, I, one time we were on the phone, he was his last appeal to me. You, you betrayed me. I loved you. You you were my friend. He was telling me all this stuff. I said, David, I'm, I'm your friend. I'm the friend that's going to tell you the truth. I said, David, I don't know whether you're diabolical and wicked and you know exactly what you're doing and you're hurting people. I said, I don't know if you have a mental problem and you don't know any better. You, you're deluded yourself and crazy yourself. I said, I don't know if you're a warlock and a witch and you're full of the devil and there's a devil in you that needs to be cast out. I said, but I think it's all three. Mm. I think it's all three of them. I said, and I said, until I know differently, brother, I'm not going to endorse you or stand with you. And no, I said, I'm going to let can. everybody know what you're doing. Because you are answer to the yes. church. Yeah, and Pastor, uh, we're going to go because we've been about an hour and a half. And we've been, you've been amazing. But I want to tell you something. Um, you know, um, we have to stand for righteousness. And we have to, yeah. you know, you know. You you can't you who can endorse something like that? I mean you just can't. I mean you know and the thing about it is and I want to make this clear to everybody out there when you're called a traitor with with like okay a pastor a pastor Reed is called a traitor. You know why? Because he confronted him because he's he's not standing with him with for his sin that he's doing. I'm a traitor because I said hey what about all these women? She's a traitor, block and deleter. So if you stand up for righteousness and you're not going to go go with all this filthiness and this sin and this wickedness that that uh, Pastor Reed has talked about, then you're called a traitor. So uh, you know people say, Vicky, you know why why is he blocking? Why do we have to block and delete you? Because I confronted him. You you know in, in I guess in cults and things like this, you don't ask questions. You know what, Sister Vicky? I know you got to go, and I know it's late. Let's pray. Can we pray? I was going to have you pray. Go ahead and pray. Can we just pray just for a yes. few seconds? Because my heart is going out to these people. Yes. There's a, there's a lot of these people that are there. They're in fear. They're serving out of duress. Yes. I mean, a lot of them want to leave and don't know how. And don't know yes, where to go. They can't talk about it. Mm -hmm. and, and it's so sad because I just I want to have a show. And, and, and all the people that are listening, everybody that's on here, I see you got, you had like 800 people on here commenting. People on here listening, right now, let's pray and take authority over the Jesus. devil. And let's pray that the eyes of these people's understanding be enlightened and the spirit of blindness will break off them. I'm going to pray it'll be real yes. quick. Yes. Father, in the yes. name of Jesus, God, we thank you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you've given us power. To cast out devils and drive out evil spirits. You said, Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. Lord, you said, Whatever we find on earth, we bound in heaven, whatever we do, so let's do it in heaven. You said, If any one of us will come together and touch and agree as touching anything, you would do it for us if we ask in Jesus' name. Yes, now, Father, we ask right now that you stretch out your hand and you touch the hearts and the minds of those people who are bound by J and M I by this delusion. We come against that demonic spirit of darkness and blindness. We rebuke that spirit that's blinding the eyes of the unbelievers, blinding their eyes to not see the truth. We command that spiritual blindness to loosen and break off the people. Break off their minds and hearts in the name of Jesus. We command it right now, Father. Let the eyes of their understanding be flooded with light. Lord, let the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you would flood their hearts. Lord, send labors across their pathway. Everywhere they turn, Father, we ask right now to cause supernatural provision to come, Lord. To give these people places to transition out of it, to crumble and break and destroy this serpent in the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus. Deceiver, this foul devil, Lord, we in deliver him Jesus. over to Satan for the destruction of in the, the flesh, of that he might be saved, even he might be saved in the, the name of Lord Jesus. In, in the, the name, name of Jesus. Jesus, we break the power of the devil now. Yes. In the name of Jesus, Father, we yes. thank you. We know you're kind, we know you're merciful. We know, Lord, that 
you are having mercy on these people. Thank you for Sister Vicki. Thank you for her family standing with her. Yes. Thank you for every godly person that loves righteousness yes. and loves truth to stand for the yes. truth. And Father, we thank you that restoration Lord. is coming to Sister Vicki and to her finances and to her ministry. Yes. To everybody who has suffered loss. You said when the thief is caught, he must restore sevenfold. Father, we yes. receive yes. sevenfold return. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank we pray. You. Jesus yes. Name. Thank you so much, Thank Pastor. You. We we're gonna have you back on because you were absolutely amazing. Okay. Amen. Cool. Amen. No All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Wasn't he amazing? Yes. Amazing. What a powerful word. What a Love powerful it. word. Wasn't Love it awesome? It. You guys. So wow. much insight. You know when you describe him, when you describe mm -hmm. David Taylor, you're describing the works of the devil. It's the devil. Absolutely. The devil. The thief. The devil's come to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's doing. Everything that he's doing is exactly Devouring. the devil's order. That's what he's done. That's right. So. Well, you know what? We are we are believing we God. This is the year. We have the power, and greater is He that is in us than He He's in the world. Amen. Song. Yes. Well, we love you guys. Tomorrow night, I'll be back on here. We have a special guest. You want to miss this week? Every night, every night. We got this is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Three amazing guests is going to be on here. We're enlightening you. We're exposing David E. Taylor. Amen. This has been going on for, what, he said 18 years or so? And this is it. This is the year. This yes. is the year. And we're the ones that more than conquerors and we're overcomers. By and we Lord. overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. And the words of our testimony is, we win. We're bringing we the win. devil's works down where they that belong, the under our humbling. feet, and all these people's being set free. Set Praise free. God. It's yeah. something to rejoice about. All week long, every morning when you, before your feet ever touches the floor, start praising God and thanking Him for yeah. the victory because we have the victory. We have the victory. Amen. Amen. This is Praise the year God. that JMMI is going to be totally shut down, and we're going to give God all the glory and all the honor. Okay? We love you guys. See you guys back here tomorrow night. Bye-bye.